Hi and welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can create different shapes using CSS. So we're going to look at how we can make anything from a little simple circle to this um, section here where we get a little triangle sort of sticking down like that, uh, as well as changing the shape of my image here and doing this big different section here. We're going to look at a whole bunch of different ways we can create these types of shapes. Okay, so I'm not going to focus on the HTML of this one too much, but I'm just going to look in my section one here of my H1 and my one icon. So the one icon is what I'm going to be focusing on there. Uh, on the section two, we'll be looking at the image as well as uh, doing something with our whole section two. And the section three is just there for sort of decoration where we use it so we can actually see the, the shape difference going on with those ones. Um, so let's get started on this. And we're going to start really nice and simple with my one icon. So the one icon that I did, this is just really basic stuff on creating shapes. So let's do one icon and let's give it a background of RGBA and we'll do 0, 0, 0, 0.3 just so we have something that we can sort of see. Great. Then let's give this a width and a height because for this I think that makes sense to do. And there we go. We got a nice little square there. We can do a margin zero auto and that will put it right in the middle. And I can do on this um, a border radius of 50%. So if you're not familiar with the border radius uh, to make circles, it works really well. Just make sure you're working with a complete box because if you're working with other things, it makes ovals that sometimes can look really terrible. So just putting a border radius on a perfect square gives me a nice little circle like that. Now to actually get my smiley face dead set in the middle here, I used to always do a display flex on there and use my justify content and align items. I just learned a really nice trick the other day, which is display grid and place items center. And oh my goodness, it goes in the middle. Um, what place items is doing is it's a shorthand property for justify items and align items. So it's doing a justify item center and a align items center and it's putting it right down in the middle and I can use that with my nice little display grid there. So nice. Now browser support, very questionable. I don't know if I'd want to be using this in the real world, um, but really nice and cool. And just as a little side note, you can learn about little things like that in my new newsletter. I've just I created one. Um, there's more information of that at the uh, in the description below, but also um, I'm going to talk about it a little bit at the end of this video. Um, so let's bring up the font size to like 2M, just to make it a little bit bigger. And this is kind of fun to do also if you have a background that's um, already like an RGBA and you make the color the same RGBA, it would just be the same thing and a bit darker because here it's just going to be like 0.6 now, right? So it's like layered opacity on top of each other, so a nice little way to do that. Um, so that one's the really basic one, and I want to jump down quickly to section two because I don't want to spend too much time. I think the more interesting thing there is actually the this part of it than anything else. Um, and so I want to focus now on my, um, or not not there yet. Actually, let's jump up. Um, creating that little arrow shape. Now there's other ways of doing this. This isn't the only way, but I'm going to be looking at using clip path and some other stuff to do some more interesting stuff down in section two. So here to make that little arrow thing, I'm going to do it with pseudo elements. If you don't know a lot about pseudo elements, please check out my other series uh, where I dove more into those. There uh, should be a card popping up somewhere for that right about now. Uh, one before. So I want to select both my uh, before and after, and I want to give them a position absolute. Um, let's give them their content of nothing. Whoops. Find the right keys there. There we go. I give it a width of like 200 or uh, maybe 150 pixels and a height of 150 pixels. And I'm going to give it a background of red just so we can see what we're actually dealing with right now. So there's my two boxes that I've just made. Um, so let's move them down, bottom of zero. And I think that's it for the moment. Because um, what I want to do is come on to each one separately now. So one, we'll start with my before. And for this one, I'm going to move it to the right by 50%. So it should move on over a little bit. And then I'm going to do a nice little transform 
and we'll do a skew on it. Now, skew is a weird property if you're not sure what it is. Um, let's actually hide my after. We're just going to deal with one now, so we're going to see what one square is doing when I skew this. So I'm going to do a skew of 20 degrees, and you can see it just sort of like, okay, it's going to take it and just sort of uh, skew it. <laughs> I don't really know another word, so it's pulling the top one way and the bottom the other way, and the bigger the number here, the more it gets skewed. Whoops, we can't do a 90 degree because it's going to disappear for, say, 50. Um, it gets pulled and pulled. 90 degrees, it's just um, it's pretty much laying flat and it doesn't really work. Like say we did 80 degrees, it's starting to get like that. So 90 degrees, it's it's skewed all the way over and we can't see it. Um, so I don't want it to be that extreme though. So let's try like 20. But I don't want to just do 20 degrees like that. I'm going to do a 0, 20. And you can see what that's doing is it's actually sort of twisting it instead of skewing it. Um, which is exactly what I want because I want it sticking out the bottom. Now the only problem is I can't see it, so I'm also going to put a Z, uh, Z index. Doesn't have to, whoops, doesn't have to be that big, but let's put 100. Um, so you can see it's sticking out a little bit here, and I could probably move my bottom down, maybe just a bit. I don't know. One M. Uh, whoops, negative one M, I should say. Um, I just want to make sure this isn't sticking out here. I want it just to be sort of a clean thing like that. So that's great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my after back on here. One after. Um, and now I want to sort of do the same thing with that one. So let's copy that and get my after in here. But obviously I don't want my right. I'm going to do this on the left. So you can see that they're on this one, you know, the two sides are touching. They're lining up perfectly by doing that. And instead of doing 20, we can do a negative 20, and now it's sticking down. It's quite, Actually, this can be used for other stuff too. It's this nice little chevron shape. You can use this for pretty much anything. Um, or not anything, but you can use it for other design elements. But all I'm going to do now is just take my background that I have here and change my red to the same one. And look at that. We just get a nice little sort of arrow pointy thing instead. So that's kind of cool. Now again, there's other ways of doing this. The nice thing with uh, using before and after to do this is browser support will be super, super good. Um, and you can use it for different stuff. It does take a bit of a markup, but you get there. Um, now, let's move on to looking at some um, clip paths, because clip paths are really cool. Browser support is could be better. It's not terrible, but it could be better. Now, if you're going to do a clip path on an image like this, it's probably decorational. So even if it doesn't really work, it's you know some graceful degradation, um, which isn't the end of the world. Um, so I'm going to start by doing the clip path on my image itself. So we can come down here and take a look at to image, which is the class I put on my image. And I'm going to give it a clip path. Now clip paths are kind of weird to work with if you're not used to working with them, but I'll show you a really cool tool in a second. So for my clip path here, there's other things you can do. I can just write in circle, circle just like that and I get a circle and in here I could write in my radius 50 pixels and it's going to give it a radius of 50 pixels or I could put you know 25% even and it's going to deal with 25% of the original image obviously if this is bigger than the original then you get something like that so you know there's kind of useless um, so clip paths are kind of cool they're nice for just cropping things down um, and doing some fun stuff with them. 100% will give you, you know, you're not really going to see it. 90, we're going to start seeing it come in. I would think. Oh, there we go. You can see that now it's starting to uh, clip in at 50%. Um, so that's a nice fun thing you can do. You can also, there's other options here, and there's a link in the description to something else, and I'm going to look at a fun tool that we can use. Um, but we're going to look at how it actually works. I'm going to write in polygon, which lets you come in with a custom one. So when you use circle, it's obviously going to be a set circle and stuff like that, and there's other shapes you can do. Um, but I want to do one that's my own custom shape. So I'm going to put 0, 0 here. And just to explain, actually, before I do that, um, this is my 0, 0 point. So you're dealing with the x-axis, x, y, x and y axes, axes. Um, and so this is my 0, 0. So this is my first point. If I come all the way along here, I'm staying on my 0 uh, for my y, but my x is becoming 100% because I'm moving all the way to the end of it. 
then down here would be 100, 100, and this one would be uh, 0, 100. So let's set that up just so there's no clipping at all to start with. So 0, 0 is my first point. My second point is 100%, 0. My third point is 100%, 100%. And my last point is 0, 100%. And I give myself a perfect square. So that's kind of cool. Um, now I can play with these numbers. I can come, this is my 0, 0. So if I make this a 25 pixels, it's going to move over 25 pixels. And if I take this one here, 100 pixels, it will move down 100 pixels. And I start getting uh, an interesting shape coming in there now. Um, also, I don't need to have necessarily this many points. Let's come in and add another one. Uh, let's just say 50%, 50% and see what happens. And you can see it's adding another point in um, to the end there. So it's going in order. So it's always it's the same way, um, it's like a clock. It's going to start in your top left. Well, clock starts in the middle, but it's going to start top left and work its way around. So the 50%, 50% got added between this one and the one that I had there. So you can start to come in and create your own shapes like that. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to put the link to this site down in the description below, which is a really nice one because it comes with all the shapes that are already there and you can play around with them. And if you get a shape and you want to modify it, hey, look at that, you can come and modify it and it gives you a nice code that you can copy down below. So custom polygon, you can even just click and add some points in and do anything you want and create some crazy shapes and stuff like that. Um, or you can use some of the ones they already have and modify them like I mentioned. So this is really uh, a nice little tool that you can use. And again, the, this link will be in the description below. Um, for the purpose of this one, I'm just going to do nice and simple um, where I'm going to change this uh, this one here actually to 75% and let's put this back to a zero zero just to have sort of a, a cutoff angle on that something a bit more interesting nothing too crazy but it's kind of fun um, and now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the angle of the between my two different sections here so let's go on number two um, now I'd sort of set this up ahead of time, but um, so I gave it a margin bottom of negative 10. I'm going to take that off uh, for the moment just so we can see why uh, I would have done something like that. Okay, so on my two, that's going to, we're going to add another uh, clip path in here. So we're going to do clip path. And once again, it's going to be a polygon. So this is for my entire section. So this whole thing with this salmon-y color here. And let's just make this bigger so we can actually see what I'm writing. Um, so let's start again with a zero zero because we don't want anything on the top to change so that will stay 100 percent zero then um ideally we'd be going all the way down so let's say we go like 100 percent actually let's just make it a square and then we'll play with it because it's a little it's nice to be able to see what we're actually doing right 100 percent 100 percent and now i can see my my whole section and it I mix these up, whoops. Uh, this one here should be 100, 100, and then this one should be a 0, 100. There we go. Okay, so that's the normal one. Now the idea here would be to take this corner and move it up. So that's the third point. So that's this one here. And I'm moving the this axis, the up and down axis is always uh, right here on this one. Now the tricky part is how do I know how much I want to move it up by? So say I came on here and I said, let's move this up by like, uh, I want to move it up 100 pixels. Well, that's not going to work because it's not moving it up 100 pixels. It's moving it from the top down 100 pixels. So that's not working at all. And then what happens if I want to take this? And, or then I could go and like calculate the whole thing. Or it's actually like one, or I don't know how tall this actually is, but say 865 pixels. Let's just see where, you know, that's actually, we're getting a little closer, but it's guesswork and then what happens if the content in this section changes and then the height of the whole thing changes which is bound to happen or you change your thing and well look at that my line already is going kind of weird the angle of it is changing as I'm moving around which is just straight up awkward um, so what we could do instead of having to worry about something like that is we could do some fun little stuff with this um, and so what I'm going to do is instead of having a set number here, or even, you know, I could put this at like 90%, obviously, and look, it's working. 
But once again, the angle of it keeps changing as I'm moving it around. Like this, it's a very soft angle. And then as I do this, it gets to a steeper and steeper angle. But what if I don't want that angle to change? I want that angle always to be the same. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use the nice little calc CSS function. And I'm going to do 100%. So it's starting always where we originally had. But then we're going to subtract, let's try 20 viewport width. And I'm purposely using width here and not height because I want this number to change with the size of my screen. So now, yes, the space is getting bigger, but you notice the angle is always staying exactly the same. Isn't that really cool that the angle is just matching uh, the whole time? So that's really fun. Now, the problem with that is uh, I think it's a bit too big, so let's bring that down to a 10. Um, so there we go. We can see that the angle always stays the same. It just sort of takes a larger chunk out at larger screen sizes, which makes sense. So it's just always going to stay like that. So it works really, really well. But I have the problem of having this empty space here. Um, so I'm going to just come on. And that's where having the negative. Um, so I'm going to do a margin bottom of negative 10 viewport width. And that's going to suck the next section up into that empty space. And that's super cool I, because I know this, this number here. So this space that's underneath is always 10 viewport width. So my margin bottom 10 viewport width, and it just sucks it up and it works perfectly. So I think that's really nice and handy for these types of sections where you might want to get these, you know, it's kind of trendy to have sections that are off by a little bit. Just be careful again, uh, clip path, sub browser support. Um, I'll put a link to the can I use because it's always updating. So I don't want to show something on the screen now. It might eventually, you know, if you find this video in six months, it might be different. Um, but as of the time of this coming out, um, it's not terrible by any means. It's just not amazing. One thing I guess that could be good is if the clip path didn't work in this case, it doesn't break my layout at all, right? Like the site's still working. So again, it is graceful degradation. Um, if a website does come on here, the padding might be a little off, so it might not be perfect, but hey, it's not too bad. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. And if you're curious about the newsletter that I mentioned, pretty much what I'm going to be doing is, or I've already started it, the first issue has gone out. It's going to be a weekly newsletter every Sunday delivered to your inbox. Um, looking at things like I did uh, with this place items, these sort of obscure little things that I fall upon that aren't big enough to make actual videos out of because you know something that I can't expand long enough or it's just this really cool thing that I want to share with people quickly things that I might include in my videos from time to time but I won't actually build a whole video about so it's sort of like these YouTube videos but my idea with them is that you can read them in under three minutes so really not long but just to keep you up to date on these cool things that I've been finding and I'll probably also be going into some design decision-y stuff as well because I do get a lot of questions about how to make designs look nicer so on little tidbits and things that you could try to make uh, your designs look better so a little bit of a combination of the two of them once again uh, any information you might want for that is in the description below thank you so much for watching also thank you so much for my patrons for making this all possible and of course until next time don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome